Uh oh. Alright, that's enough of that. That's the theme song. Hi everybody, it's me, Alec Mappa. Welcome to Girl Friday, an Instagram live uh, show to feed COVID-19 nurses and frontline workers. I've been doing this about three weeks. This is how it works. We hang out for an hour with me and my friends. If at the end of it, you've enjoyed it in any way, shape or form, you click on the link in the bio and you can buy a nurse dinner for only um, $7.99. In some, uh, some of the restaurants, you can see, I, you can just see my husband for a second back there. In some of the restaurants, they've been charging us half price. So they have been, um, they have been only charging us $5. So last week with the money we raised, just doing Instagram Live, we were able to feed 200 COVID-19 nurses and frontline workers. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. We have an amazing show today. I'm yelling at you. I'm yelling. I'm. I have to lower my volume. I'm, it's because I'm excited. I'm excited because today on the show, we have my favorite people. We have Molly Shannon, my former classmate from NYU. We have Mike Ruiz, the amazing genius photographer. Jake Shears, an actual rock star from the Scissor Sisters. And Kathy Griffin, who I've been wanting to talk to forever. You know, oh my God, the year she's had. So let's see who's in the... Um, Molly, are you here yet? I was going to start with you. I'm going to go through. Um, she is not in the waiting room yet. All right. <laughs> okay. It's going great so far. All right. This is what we're going to do. Molly, while we're waiting for you, because the Instagram turns off at like an hour. They give me an hour to do this. I'm going to talk to who's here. And um, let's see who's here. Let's see who's our first guest. Waiting, waiting in the wings. M uh, Molly, if you're here, just text me that you're here. Oh my God, everybody. <laughs> it's oh. Mike Ruiz. I need your filter. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> this, I'm using the um, RuPaul season one filter where it looks like I've been struck by lightning. Uh huh. You know, that was, <laughs> did you ever see the movie Star Booty that I directed? With yes. That yes. comes from me. We they go owe it we, all to me. We go so far back, you and I. We met a long we time do. ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When did you start doing your media appearances? When did your photo well well let's let's go back. Tell me your journey into photography from being a little um uh, well, I was uh, born French Canadian um, boy, French Canadian Filipino boy from Quebec. I was born a poor coal miner's daughter. Uh huh. No, I, was, I read you know, that I, um, I mean, you know, I mean, people are sick of hearing that story. You know, no, I, not. I was, I, no, was not. I was poor, a poor little Filipino gay boy living in the middle of nowhere. I worked really hard and made all my dreams come true. And, and here I am. Look, look, you inspired my haircut. I had a little clipper mishap. <laughs> but, I had a clipper mishap and this bang right here. Watch this. Mm -hmm. I turned into a Karen like immediately. Like I just, it's like, hi, I'm hip and I'm cool. Now I need to speak to the manager. <laughs> yes, yes, Karen, um, Becky, you're more of a Becky, you did, you're too um, young to be a Karen. Uh, when we, I am, we are the same age. Did you we know are. that? Maybe we were separated we at birth. Age. Probably, probably. You got all Were the you born at the though. base of Mount Pinatubo? Oh my God. That's, that's why we're so connected. <laughs> that's why we're so connected. Mm -hmm. um, when did, when did, okay, so you, you made your dreams come true. You became yeah. a photographer. When did it cross over into all of the media appearances on America's Next Top Model and RuPaul's Drag Race? How did that happen? Um, I don't know. You know, I kind of willed it, just like I did everything else. I literally, like, I it's remember like laying in bed thinking, you know what? I think I want to be on TV now. And, you know, lo and behold, it, it <laughs> happened. Like, literally, that's, you know, when I was a little kid, I used to fantasize about this stuff. And I realized, you know, it was like, um, you know, I... And, you know, in hindsight, I realized like I was able to make things manifest that way. You know, I would just like really see right. them and believe them. My parents thought I was like insane because I was, I would tell them, you know, I was like 11 telling them how I'd be like hanging out at, you know, someday I'm going to be hanging out at Studio 54 with Bianca and Liza and everything. And Exactly. 
Yeah, so exactly. you know, it kind of it kind of happens. And the same thing with TV. You know, I was just like, you know, I I think I kind of want to do some stuff in front of the camera. You know, I just I'm all about the experience, and I just wanted to you know give it a go, and I did, and it was fun, and you know. I'm having a panic attack. Why? Because I used to know how to figure out to get people um, into the room, mm -hmm. and now I don't know how to do that. Do I do that through this thing? This button, no, that is the filter. Um, I'm such a grandma. I had Molly lined up. I had Jake Shears lined up. And now I can't find them. Oh, um, no. How do well, I it looks like an people? hour of me. It's going to be an hour of you, basically. <laughs> uh huh. I, I rehearsed a couple of song and dance numbers just in case. OK, hit it. Swanee <laughs> River. Um, I'm going to get my husband. Hold on one second. OK. Jamie. Oh, Maybe I'll answer que I'll answer questions in the meantime. You you go take care okay. of what you got to do. Does right. anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions for the um, uh, immaculately? Um, uh, okay. where, where do you where are your filters? Michael I want your Reeves. filter. Where do I find how do people let people in? Right there, right. That is not leading me to. That's not leading me to the thing. Oh God, this is such a disaster. <laughs> you have microwaves on. Right? I know, I know, I have microwaves on, but I don't, I don't. I don't. Hi. Okay. So. Okay. Questions. Hey. Questions. Other things. Um. Okay. Tips for portrait photography. That's like a four-hour okay. conversation. Give me the what master are your... class while I figure this out. Okay. What are your favorite shows? Um. I have been watching. What's the Christina Applegate thing on Netflix? I love that. Dead to me. Love Dead it. to me. So amazing. good. Dead to me. I, you know, I, I watched Ozark twice because I love it so much. I'm actually... I haven't. Well, um, qu uh, catch me up on Ozark on how that works. Oh, God. It's so, it's so like, convoluted. This, the the, the crisscrossing of storylines is so, like, I mean, I don't even remember what happened. I was just, like, dumbfounded by the end of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but um, I'm actually shooting the um, the detective um, next week. Shut via, up! Yeah, it's going to be my first celebrity shoot via Zoom. Oh my god! Yeah, my god, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm trying to you okay, know I'm trying to be on the cutting edge. No, this is why you can't add. Why can't I add anybody? Because you're currently have talking to. Somebody. Okay, so I'm talking to somebody. Oh, when I end, I'm able to add somebody. <laughs> Probably. Oh my! I'm so that's sorry. That's what. That's okay. what it was. I was panicking right before I got on because I didn't see you in the live, and I'm like, I called my friend. I'm okay. like, what am I gonna do? Okay, listen. Okay. I have radical acceptance at this point. I chanted right before we came on the air, so we should be fine. I. Okay. What I love about you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna brag about you for a second. Is you're built like a mountain, but you're a total pussy cat. You're like, you, your body is so <laughs> snatched. And I said, oh my god, your body's amazing. And you were like, it's just for show. <laughs> well, you know, kind of is. I mean, who, who have been your favorite pr people that you photographed? Um, Kathy. Kathy, you you photographed um, quite a bit. Prince. Prince. Prince Harry. Tell me, a, tell us a Prince story. Melania Trump. Do you want me to tell you my Melania Trump story where I photographed her in short sure. tower? Was she dressed? She was actually really sweet. Melani was, was great. Um, but, you know, the other guy who um, was, he was there, he was there for about an hour and a half. Oh, and gross. he was he was he was so um, like he was like a, he was like a, a petulant child. We were all like commenting like, oh, my God, like he was so bummed that he was so freaked out that Melania was getting any attention at all. Like he was trying to grab the photo editor and like the editor and telling her, oh, you know, and you know who we have on The Apprentice this year? This was in 2000, like literally trying to steal Melania's me, thunder. Me, me, was, me, 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 it was, me, It was pretty sad and pathetic. And we just all got a good chuckle out of it. You know, who would have thought yeah. that he would have carried that into the White House? But anyway. Yeah, whatever. did you tell Melania, if this is a hostage situation, blink twice? <laughs> well, there was, um, yeah, there was no, Oh. there was no chemistry. Like they didn't even cross each other. They didn't speak to each other. Oh, there was no, no that's like, yeah. terrible. Um, it wasn't I like, bye, honey, see quick. you later. You have this book coming out. You, It's out already. Your copy to the book. It's out, yes. literally. Wherever fine um, photography books are sold, it's so good. I'm so glad to have you as a friend. I'm sorry to freak out on you. On the <laughs> That's <air>. all right. <laughs>
<laughs> Let's do this again. Um, yes. And I'll, I'll up my Lexapro taking and, and I'll handle <laughs> okay. it calmly. We'll right, figure out our, our technicals. Okay. All right. I love you, Alec. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Oh my God. This is, this is so nerve wracking. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh my God. Yay, let me see if this works. Oh, Molly. I am I, so sorry, Alex. I suck at this. I'm don't, so don't, bad at this. No, don't even worry, because what happened was I was waiting outside, and then it was like, I was like, oh, I'm here. And then it said, no internet connection. So I was like, oh, so I'm so sorry. And then, and then I was crying, because, and then, so I just basically spent the first 10 minutes of the show going, hey, 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 Oh my hey. God, I know, it's okay. I mean, what are you gonna do? Can you I, hug me? I, I need a hug, Molly, just hug, virtual oh, hug. Oh, Alec, I'm so happy to be here with you. I know, we've known each other for 75 years. We used to go to church together when we both were still Catholic. I forgot about that. Did we go to church together? We went together on um, 6th Avenue or something. You used to go to the 10 o'clock mass together. That's so funny, Alec. I forgot yeah. about that. I'm so, wait, is my, is the technical thing okay? Cause I'm in my. It's okay. We have it fixed. Okay, good, good. We have it Yay. fixed. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, we went to NYU drama school together and you are so yeah. talented and Oh. I used to come to all your shows with Jessica Lundy yeah. and oh my god this is so fun back then when we had big dreams we, we had, had big, big dreams. dreams yes yes and you're doing such incredible work Alec get, raising money for these nurses giving them dinners I mean I'm so happy to be a part of this thank for, you so you're much you're doing such Molly. wonderful work I mean it's thank incredible you. yeah thank you um, yeah I remember like when we were at NYU together, we took everything so seriously. Did we? We Remind used to do. Me. Yeah, tell me. Okay. Remember that? Oh, this is a weird filter. I don't want that. Um, remember, like, you know, your married Kathleen Gallagher, you know, Annette would be best expressed by a monologue? Yeah. One of the first, mo the monologue that you used to work on in class all the time was from Agnes of God. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe you remember that. It was so <gasps> dramatic. It, it was, was like, like, baby. What baby? He used to touch me. It was like, yeah, it was like a. <laughs> it was like, mommy, monologue. mommy, don't burn me. Oh no, mommy, please don't burn me. It was dark <laughs> and dramatic, right? That, that's what I was attracted to. Or I did monologues with a southern accent that had like, mama, oh mama, you know, it was a lot of that. <laughs> and then in our Commedia del Arte class with Alan Langdon, was the first time you did the chairs thing. Oh, you yeah. set it up that you you made us as the class sit in front of the doorway. And then you had all the folding chairs off to the side. So whenever you would leave the frame of the door, you would crash into shit. And yes. we were all like looking at each other like, she's crazy. <laughs> I forgot about that. I mean, I remember that class, but I didn't remember that with the chairs. That's, that is why. You um, loaned me your red shoes the very first time I did drag. Cause we had the I same did? size feet. Uh -huh. I thought that was very generous. Um, uh, real quick, because I know you got to go. I want to talk oh, no, about your okay. performance in um, Other People. Oh. That was like next level. Oh my How God. How was that for Alan. you? Thank you so much. I had so much fun. Well, Chris Kelly wrote the script and um, it was such a beautiful script. I'm so glad you saw it. Thank beautiful. you for watching it. It's on Netflix now. So good. Of you who have, oh, good. I thank you so much. Yeah, I loved it. So um, it was just incredible. You won I, an I, Independent I, Spirit Award. Yes, yes. And um, it was just so fun playing the part. It was um, funny and dramatic. And I just thought it was so beautiful. And um, I, I loved making that movie. I felt so lucky to get offered that part. You know, I couldn't believe it. it you was... get offered? You weren't put on tape? Like me? No, no. Chris, <laughs> Ke Chris Kelly just called me and asked me if I could do it. So he's and... incredible. And he's so talented. And the script was so good. It, it took my breath away. I remember I closed it and I was like, Oh, I, I love the scene where, um, if for those of you who haven't seen the movie, she's dying and her son, who's gay, um, uh, wants to do all these things for her because he can feel her life is slipping away. And he's like, I want to take you on a trip. I want to yeah, take you around the world. Do, would, didn't you love that? And then she's like, it's okay. You don't have to take me, you know, you don't have to do that. I get to see my whole world at dinner tonight. Like everything that matters her, she gets to see at dinner. I love, that's my favorite line in the movie. I'm a wreck. I just finished watching it. 
And oh. then and then you forgot to say at the end of the movie you were like I farted. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> didn't you didn't you love the scene with um John Early too like in the playground when they're talking? I love that scene. I too. love that scene and I love the little drag queen kid who's in it and oh. I did a pilot with Bradley Whitford um 2 years ago and I fell in love with him immediately. I was yeah. like I just yeah. loved him. He's yeah, amazing. That's such a great cast. Oh, you're good. amazing in it. I'm not going to keep you. I just want to let you know. Oh, that's you know, okay. I, 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 have feel, I feel fine. I'm all set up. Wait, what else do you remember about drama school? Like, do you remember when we first met? Like, remind me. Did you like I remember you... that your energy was like, you were like so excited about everything. <laughs> you were like, you, you would have your, you didn't, it was before you had your hair straightened. And I was like, Molly, I, you're like, why is your hair black? Because she goes, I'm black Irish. And I was like, I've never heard of that. What does that mean? Are you part black? <laughs> she goes, well, no, the Spaniards. And like, you had, you had black, black curly hair. Yeah. Um, we are, uh, Brenda Slaughter. Do you remember Brenda, Brenda Slaughter? Brenda, yes, of course. Yeah. She's we wonderful. We used to do this, um, she used to do an impression of you. I said, you talk to Molly? And she would go, really? Because that was your response <laughs> I'm still to like that. Like, I, I just saw this Broadway show last night. Really? Like, it was like, <laughs> Everything we would, everything we would say to you was like the most important thing you'd ever heard. It was just like, <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. I once got asked to do, um, um, I know Regis Philbin and uh, I filled in for um, Regis and um, I, I filled in as a co-guest host. And I remember I was so nervous that Regis is so nice and wonderful, but um, I was not good at all. I said, wow, so many times in the morning. I was like, wow. Wow! I must have said it like sixty times. I was like, "Oh God, not cut out for Does that." Does she know Six. any other word? Yeah, but people. Like I also geez. remember that you were up for anything. You were up for anything. Like you were one time you were doing like um a a, a murder house mystery job someplace yes. where you played like some southern like Camille Cockfoster. I did murder mystery weekends to make money, where they hire actors to go to like a hotel in upstate New York. And we all play characters and people pay for the weekend to, you know, they pay a certain amount of money for drinks, dinner, party, and they have to guess who the murderer is. And my character was Camille Cockfoster. But you get to stay at like fancy hotels and stuff. Is that what you remember? Nice. Yeah, nice. It was, it was nice. Good way for actors to make money and stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but you were like, you were wait, like so up for any gig. And and then I also, also remember uh, you were, I was one of the first person you told about Gary Coleman attacking you in a hotel room. I remember oh that. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Where he was like flinging himself at you. Um, and you, he, yes. you locked yourself in the bathroom and you were yes. like, and he was like, I can see you, Molly. I can see yes. you. I told the story on Conan mm -hmm. actually. So I think it's online somewhere. Oh, oh my God, that was, that was a public. crazy night. But um, but how, Alec, how are your kids? Everybody's great. Um, we're hanging yeah. in. Um, it's they're doing remote school, as I know your son is too. Yeah. And so that's a yeah. little bit of a, a learning curve. But I do have to say, I like not having to drive to school in the morning. It's really nice. I like not that's driving. Nice, right? Yeah, because LA is such a big driving city. So I really like that part. You know. Hate it. Hate it. Yeah. 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 All right. Oh my God! Well, it's so. Uh, thank you for asking me to do this, Alec. It's so nice to thank see you. Thank you for doing it, Molly. I can't believe oh. you said yes. I'm, I'm so, so happy I'm for all so... you, and I'm so happy for all your success, professionally and personally. We're parents. Thank you. Thank I know. you. Okay, this good, is okay. like a meeting a childhood friend again, and just kind of catching up. And it's so good to see you. you and too. I'll probably see you at the next fundraiser because that's all we ever see each other at. It's yeah, like exactly. <laughs> okay, great. And right, thanks bye, for making honey. me put on. Thanks for making me put on a little makeup this morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, bye, bye, Molly. Bye, y'all. Wow. Wow. Okay, I did it. Uh, we did it. We did it, you guys. We did it. All right, next guest. All right, let's see if I'm pressing the guest thing. No, that's not it. We're going like this. We're pressing that thing. I'm pressing the button. I'm trying to get our next guest on. Okay, our next guest is here. Oh my God, this is so nerve wracking. I need somebody else to do this for me. Oh, shit. What's up? Everybody, How's please welcome to Alec Moppet Girl Friday, my close personal friend, Jake Shears. 
What's up? Hi, Alec. How are you? I'm good. Where are you? I am in Virginia, uh, at, uh, a house near my family, and um, in Bristol, Virginia, the birthplace of country music. Uh, right. So they say. And just randomly, I just wanted to say, this is very strange, but speaking of Gary Coleman, just a second ago with yeah. Molly, which was a great conversation, I happen to have Gary Coleman's memoir right here. <laughs> Gary Coleman, Medical Miracle. I was sitting here being like, you know what? I have his memoir like right over there. Anyways, just just in re in remembrance of. <laughs> just... This has become Jungian, you know, like when somebody's on the uh, on the couch and mentions a butterfly and one flies by the window. Yeah, I had this dream about Gary Coleman attacking me in a hotel room. I mean, that's a that's a wild story. <laughs> I did his last sitcom appearance. We were we were doing a sitcom with um, a a Alan Adam Arkin, and I was Adam Arkin's secretary. And Adam Arkin had told me to set up a, a um, an appointment with Gary Oldman because he's <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I thought he had said Gary Coleman, and Gary Coleman showed up, and hilarity ensued. Oh, how was he? How was he? What was he like in 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 real life? He didn't it attack you. Yeah. It, no, he didn't. Yeah. I wasn't his type. I feel kind of offended that he didn't, actually. <laughs> I wore this for you because I wanted to glam rock it up a little bit. Yeah, those look lovely. I had lots of sequins. I didn't wear, I've got, I mean, I've got lots of stuff around, but I, you know, I didn't, I wore, I wore up my melting acid <laughs> Mickey shirt, which is my, this is my party shirt. If I'm wearing this out, uh, you know, if you see me out in the town in this shirt, you know, I'm like mad out of happen. it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This is my, this is You're my like be, um, getting go, into go trouble shirt. Sure. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think those days might be, might be done. But those were the go, days. Those were the days. I feel like you're somebody from the East Village scene that escaped, and took your act, and it became mainstream. You took all the influences because when we're when we're living in those shitty apartments, you call Manhattan the place where you have to make something happen. And yeah, yeah. And what's so funny is that this last, uh, this, this, this last summer, I moved back to my old block, two doors down from my old apartment on 12th Street uh, with a buddy of mine, <laughs> who my, my friend who I met back in the day because he was my next door neighbor. But I lived back on my old block on 12th Street between A and B all summer and up until I just I just left again like over the winter but I was on my old block in you know one of those gnarly little apartments it was really fun I, I mean the neighborhood has changed so much yeah but. I lived on 13th between first and a when I was 18 years old and, and how, um, how long were you there for a year yeah and it was like all kinds of weird things would happen I was really like I had sex a lot I would meet people. I did really dangerous things. Like I worked at Boy Bar on St. Mark's Place. Remember yeah. That place? I, I used to serve cocktails. The thing about New York that's it, like, how does it, it feel? It was so fun is that you could fall into bed with people. And I think you still can fall into bed with people, but yeah. you really can sort of stumble around in a day and randomly kind of like but, but, end up in multiple beds. <laughs> but not like in your 20s. In your 20s, it's like, I got to make it happen. I got to get laid today. Yeah, well, no, exactly. I mean, it's not that's not what it's like for for like anymore. But but no, back in the day, there's I remember at the, in the, there was a there was a day uh, it was there was a blackout in 2003 or something. And like, uh -huh. I just I, I remember it was the sluttiest I think I ever have been in my life. It was just like, one thing after another over like a, a, a you know, a 24 hour period. Did you ever Good time. Good did memory. you ever keep count on a day? Like I would keep, I would keep count. I would go, wow, that was a lot. Yeah, like, well, there are those. In Fire Island, I was like, okay, I think we we reached the ceiling. We... No, there are those days you finish and you're like, wow, like, wow, I've I have been a, a whore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I've been an absolute. But you know, those are the best. Days. Those are the best days. The those best, best days. days. So your. I've gotten way too. I got. I, I've gotten way too like. It, like uh, I've I've changed so much since then. I'm I'm like, I, I well at least I tell myself that you know I'm wow. like much more like I can't sleep with anybody unless I'm you know like really feeling it. Like, I, have feelings. I have to be <laughs> yeah. I have to. 
Yes. <laughs> also, the Lexapro doesn't help. The Lexapro oh, doesn't no. help. Yeah, listen, I was on I was on Lexapro for a while and like I had to get off of it. Cause I was just Everybody like this. Everybody gets off of it because my husband's like, why are you taking so long? I'm like, it's the Lexapro. Yeah, I'm the Lexapro really. To you. Totally, it changes the game a little bit with that. I mean, I just went on Wellbutrin, and now I'm just like on a ridiculously high dose of Wellbutrin. And it does, it does just fine for me. That's great. Are you like Dolly Parton? Are you writing a song every day? Um, I've been writing a lot. But here's my. I set up a little uh, home studio, you know, in this house that I'm in. Um, and I've just been writing a ton. Yeah, I've been like just taking loads of tutorials and getting better with. Um, you know, just my production skills and stuff. You know, I'm always writing with other people and I've always, there's always somebody else in the driver's seat and I've always liked it that way. But now not being able to do that, I've had to kind of like learn how to do a few more things myself and re really record my own vocals. And so I've just been like working every day and uh, like I've had pretty good, you know, pretty good output. Written some, so you have a really stuff. clear channel as far as your creativity goes. I just try to like, you know, I'll do like a week on and a week off. You know, I'll do like a week where I'm just like, all right, I'm getting up early every morning and I'm like, you know, I'm or, or you know, I'm just like working all day. I'm going to like really go for it and and put out a bunch of stuff. And then the next week I'll just do fuck all and be like, I'm not, you know, wow. just chill out. Have you always been yeah. like that? Because writing is the hardest thing for me. I feel like I used to try to write every day and I used to try to do it like constantly. And I find that I do better work if I really give myself big breaks. If if I do set aside time and go for it, go for it, go for it. And then just chill out for a second and let the well fill back up All or right. what whatnot. I'm going to give that a try. <laughs> Wait, you just froze. Wait, say froze. that. Wait, see, so you froze too. You froze too. I you said, froze. Actually, I'm just. I said. I'm going to give that a try. <laughs> yeah, I just, just, you know, just be super. Like, it's just, I, I like being disciplined for, you know, specific amounts of time. And then, and then, you know, but I find that if I give myself more breaks and not be so hard on myself, I get better work done. I loved your book. Your boy Thank you. Swinging, Thank you. David Bowie song. I remember being yes. a kid David Bowie on SNL with Klaus Nomi. And oh David my God. Justice and and Joey like, Arias. Yeah. Joey and Klaus. So um, there's, a, there's a part of your book that really spoke to me and I want to read it real quick. Jackie sure. Beat says I talk too much during the guests, but fuck her. So, no, I love um, it. <laughs> so you're, the thing that I love about your music and your showmanship is you, you're kind of like, as a kid, I was that gay kid that everybody said, tone it down. Just, yeah. right? Yeah. So I grew <laughs> yeah, up yeah, with yeah. that king. And being a comic and a performer, you get, a, you get to get away with all the things you didn't get to get away with as a kid. Yes, absolutely. But those feelings you talk about still remain with you in the book. And I'm going to read this as fast as I can. Um, uh, you got into an argument with Derek. Mm, yeah. In the book. Yeah, to Del Marquis in, in my band. Yeah. A jealous animal had spewed out of me that I had been shoving under the rug. I felt threatened by Derek's fascination with representations of masculinity. I thought because I was a freewheeling fag, it somehow made me less than. I allowed myself to wear sequins, prance around the stage, perform queenery. But I told myself it was twice removed an act. I still carried the shame of who I was. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> that, I, I was like I could, I'd be like in pride parades and performing for prides. And, and then somebody would call me a fucking faggot walking down the street. And I'd be like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Like, like you, you, you still carry, I, I think that carry those things for a long time um you know we carry those insecurities and things can like you know, bring them out of us you're freezing are you frozen are you he's there? frozen oh wait wait <laughs> sorry i was you froze that's okay saying that that uh that yeah those we i feel like we carry those insecurities like with us you know things you know bring them out of us oh no am i Jake, still i lost you you're still on. You're still on, but you're frozen. Oh no, I ended on a bummer note. <laughs> All right, let's wait. A, what's that? Oh, I hear you. There, I see you. You are still here. Am I still here? Can you see me? Can you see me? All right. Yes. 
I can see you. Wait, how about? All right. Listen, I love you. Is it? Is it That's I love right. you too. Tell everybody to donate to the nurses. Yeah, I, w I will. Can you hear me at all? No? I can hear you. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, everybody donate to the nurses at the end of this episode. And, and Alec, thank you so much for having me on. I've had so much fun. I love and, you, uh, Jake. I love you too. Let's let's talk. Let's let's talk again. Let's have, let's hang, let's hang out and have a Zoom hang and and have a little carry. I would love that more than anything. But fun. main maintain eye contact with me the whole time because I can't come unless you do. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Take care. Okay. Take care. Um, I have a a, a a a person anxiously awaiting to. God damn it! Here we go. Go live with. Here we go. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait. Hi, lady. Alec! Oh my God. I've been so concerned for you for so long. Don't make me cry. I love you. I miss you. I miss you too. You've been through. I'm, first of all, I'm sorry about your mom. Oh, thanks, babe. I yeah. know. I, I get so touched because people reach out and it's so personal, and I really appreciate that. And when people like come up to me and they go, hey, I, I feel like I, I knew your mom, I always go, you did. She was really that person. Like the person you saw on camera was the real, the real Maggie and, and same with my father. And so it's hard and you know, yeah. the whole no memorial thing, but I honestly, it's like, I, I'm so glad that um, my fans allow me to post a clip of her and they know it isn't like morbid, but it's like, come on, you guys, like we need a Maggie moment today. So right, I'm, right. that's kind of how I'm, that's for now, that's kind of how I'm trying to honor her. I met both your parents. At Thank one I know. of your Christmas parties back at your old house. And it was when you used to do Toys for Tots. Yes. And, um, and the, the, the hot would come. Yeah. The controversy was your mom, your dad and mom were like saying, I'm not saying happy holidays. Yeah. I'm saying Merry Christmas. Yeah. They were very um, serious about that. By the way, you know, neither one of them have, uh, will go to a church unless it's a wedding or a funeral, but they acted very Catholic. And so, yeah, they, I think there was a, a time when they were saying freedom fries. Look, when they get to a certain age, you know, you got to just understand it's like kids. But how are you doing? Tell me I'm good. Doing. You know, I have the kid. Um, he's 15. So I see him at breakfast and I see him at dinner. And uh, my husband's working from home because he's in post-production. But like what we do for a living is like, I, it's, it's weird doing stand up on Zoom. I hate it. Of course. Of course. And it's also, you know, we're all walking the line between how do we make this funny, but we all know people really are thirsting for comedy. So that's something, um, right. you know me, I'm going to make a special, even if I have to make it myself. <laughs> but I right. um, have been thinking about how to do a special literally <laughs> in my house and, uh -huh. um, you know, do, do, do like a stand up mic and do sort of a, a, a you know, category special, but thinking about yeah. the stuff that we can make funny without you know, really with, with, with the magnitude of the seriousness, like for example, yeah. I went to, um, I went to, uh, I live in LA County and I'm lucky enough that LA County partnered with an NGO called CORE, C-O-R-E. And I encourage your viewers to go and, and see if this is happening in your neighborhoods more because there's more testing. Okay. So they finally had free testing. And the first day, um, I live in a quarantine house. So it's, it's me and three guys and we have made a quarantine pact like Nobody gets in, nobody, co nobody comes in, nobody gets out. Like we are really right. hardcore. And um, so we go to get the test. Uh, my husband and I are in one car. Um, my assistant who's holding the phone right now is in his car. My house manager fix it dude is in his car. They are, um, uh, the two gentlemen are homosexuals. So when uh -huh. we're, the first day we went, the line was three and a half hours long. Right. The second time I got my second test, it was like 40 minutes. So I encourage everyone to go if they can. But the funny thing is the line was so long to get the COVID test that the gay boys started getting bored. And then they're texting me like, what do you think of the guy in the Prius? And I'm like, excuse <laughs> me, we are here for a test. We're helping, we're helping with, with statistics. And then the other one joins in. He's like, what about the one in the Camry? Hello, <laughs> and I'm like, excuse me, hello. And then I go, you're not cruising. We are getting a COVID test. This is not cruising. And it's like, we well, right, get to see right. him single. And I'm just, then it turned into, because you know, girls, we can hold, hold our pee like a camel. So then the <laughs> second half of the line was all three of the guys, including my husband, just having a, I have to pee freak out. And then it was, well, if I go pee against a fence, will you guys stand guard? And I'm like, no, I'm Kathy Rippin. I'm, people think I'm an 
crisis. I'm not going to be standing guard at a COVID drive through while you guys are pissing and cruising. <laughs> so that's my day. Um, your special wrecked me. It was, it scared oh. me so bad. Wait a minute. Do you mean available in 62 countries? Kathy oh Griffin held the story, award-winning feature yeah. film, a little bit different for me. I'm so glad you watched it. Like, it means a lot. Thanks. Thank I've you. watched it a couple of times. You're so punk rock in how you lived through this. I want to know, are you still going through it? Are you still kind of like... Yeah, it's a never ending thing. You know, the the Trump, uh, the Trump cult, you know, they, they, they're a dog with a bone. And you know, especially when it's a falsehood and one that's sort of fun to listen to. So I'm now on the are you ready? I'm now on the Jeffrey Epstein flight log, according to these people. You know, me and Bill Gates, we went to Jeffrey Epstein's island a lot. And then I molested a lot of young girls. Got it. Got it. Just Thank like you. Hillary with the uh, pedophile pizza parlor. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Huma Abedin, and they were um, baby killing, is something like that. So yeah. that stuff still goes on. But I have to say, um, I don't know if you have time to whip out your phone, but I'm going to just tell you that yesterday, for the first time in nearly three years, I threw up the picture again, and I put, "Here's your mask, asshole. Put it on. People are dying." And I don't even know how many likes it's up to. 24,000. 24,000. But I'm just saying, Alec, like, I was practically crying because when I even sent it, and I didn't do the blurred picture. I did the gory one. And I was literally shaking. And I, I and I, I What is with, wrong with you? What the fuck? Because he deserves it. And now we all know he deserves it. And I was like, <laughs> he fucking head. deserves it. But the oh, whole time. Oh, he doesn't want to wear a mask? Well, guess what? I got a picture with a mask. A Donald Trump <laughs> bloody mask. So anyway, it was, uh, you know, so I, I said, I had the guys, I go, look at the comments first, because of course I'm like, oh, PTSD from the last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. It was like, she's back. You know, score this one for Griffin. You know, I, I have this as my screensaver. Like it was a literally 100% different reaction to three years ago. Now the fringe Holy elements shit. are still going to do their thing. But I just kept thinking, you know what? There's going to be a moment when somehow that picture is going to have a, an appropriate time. And sure enough, him with that freaking mask thing about I won't and it's not manly and you know his followers, they're thinking, oh, well, if he doesn't wear one, then we shouldn't. And I'm thinking this calls for a signature Kathy Griffin bold statement 2.0. Oh, my God. You got gigantic <laughs> balls, lady. I mean, like after... After watching your special and everything you went through, are you still on a no-fly list? No, I'm off the no-fly list. I'm off the Five Eyes list. Um, what is interesting, though, is that I've had three really prestigious journalists file a FOIA Freedom of Inf Information Act. And um, uh, one of them got a response after a very long time, and he sent it to me. And it was the government. Because I said, I'm always going to want to know, what the hell did you guys put on my passport? that I was on the no-fly right. list, and then detained at right. every airport, including American airports. Right. Um, right. And so the response- Like at the push of a button, like somebody just went- At the push of a button, Bing. by like Don Jr. Yeah. or something. And so, right. uh, so the response from the federal government was, um, we're still gonna need more time to look into this. So I'm telling you someday, I'm gonna find out like what the heck they put on my passport that was like red flag, red flag, detention, detention. So in the meantime, I'm just like, screw it. Put the picture back up. People are dying. This guy's acting like a lunatic. I don't know why they can't just go in there and put a straight jacket on him. So, you know, I, you know me, I I'm going Maxine for it. I Waters at an airport lounge before the quarantine. And I was like, I, I'm not a nut. I'm just coming to say I'm a fan. Yeah. And I'd love a selfie. I worry about you. I worry about you being protected. And she said, my security's everywhere. I'm taken care of. And then she looked and sure enough, there were like agents yeah. like around the place. Do you have anything like that? I do. You and ever? you know, yeah, I do. Um, I, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a, now it's a different situation because of COVID, but yeah, it was a very helpful thing. And I got to tell you, um, when I went to, uh, I think it was the uh, March for Our Lives uh, rally and um, Congresswoman Waters spoke she had she said a line and you may know it but boy do i relate to it and she said and to all of you that are threatened to shoot me you better shoot straight because nothing's more dangerous than a wounded animal 
And that's who I am. I'm a wounded animal, and this administration should be frightened because I am coming for you. Yeah, but were you like this because of this, or you you were always like a badass before? I yeah, feel but like about you like were celebrities, like, like about celebrities, but that was and celebrities. The Kardashians. And, and by the way, now it's all one and the same. I mean, Kim Kardashian's done more for prison reform than, than the president. So I know, that's it's the all like thing. getting so mixed up. I know, I know. Who are you like obsessing about these days? Who am I obsessing about? I'm obs well, I, it, I've gone through quarantine obsessions and it's based on whatever I'm binging. So I was, um, I was, I was obsessed about cheer because I didn't know it was going to be a black gay show. It was like RuPaul's Drag Race. It was so good. And yeah. then um, uh, now uh, Dead to Me, I've been, I just started that and What We Do in the Shadows. But as far as obsessing about people, um, I, I'm allowed my, I allow myself one hour of news a day and it's always Maddo because I feel like she's like the news doula. She kind right. of she's delivers is, is bad news in a way that you can accept. Wait, who is this? Rachel Maddo. Oh, I, it's so funny because I was just going to say, I was going to ask you, so I was going to say, if, if, if I could pick one hour a day, it would be The Maddow Show. Because I really like them when she goes into those rural areas and tells the story that nobody else wants to hear and stuff like that. Now, I will say, though, as hardcore quarantine as we are here at the Team Griffin Quarantine House, um, the guys have um, browbeaten me into letting them get a haircut and <laughs> do it in the front driveway so it's outside. <laughs> the dude has like the mask and basically- Are you kidding? Mask. No, and so the guys are gonna get a haircut and they promised that all three of them are going to immediately completely shower afterwards. But wait, I have to tell you this because I, I think you might have a few LGBT fans. Am I- One or two, one okay. or two. So I just wanted to, you know, I like to give the gays the slow clap. Okay, so get ready. So okay. um, Caleb, turn the camera on yourself. Hi, okay. Alex. Put it back Hi. To the star. Star. All right, so um, Caleb said, uh, my husband said, I want to go short. I don't want to have to like worry about a haircut for a while. And then Caleb said, I just want mine trimmed and texturized. You don't even get that joke, Alec, because no straight people say that. Straight people go, I want to trim this one. And he's like, and then I had to, I, I go, I don't even believe texturize is a word. And then Randy goes, it's a verb. And so now here's what I'm afraid of. They're going to do like a three person haircut thing outside the house. My husband's going to be let in first. And then the gays are going to be in some sort of fucking piss night at the slammer. You know, and I want to ask you that. I mean, I think about small businesses and I wonder how is piss night at the slammer doing? I mean, are they tarping it? It's you know. never, it's the new now. It, it's a and new now. We're going to have and how's, well, we're where, gonna have where to be are you tarped. going to do your pissing in a tarped room now? Yeah, in a tarped room, which which kind of takes the fun out of it, you know, because know. it's actually the warmth and the smell that the is, that enhances the experience. And the now there's kind of a, a, a window in between it. My, uh, you know, we do, we both do gay cruises. I don't know if you do them anymore. Oh, I don't honey. know if that's ever coming back. Hi. But um, I know, I know. Remember that rock climbing wall? Cruises. Yeah. Remember that rock climbing wall that they had on all the cruises? So uh, there was a story that was going around with this muscle queen, he had a panic attack and he was like stuck and he's like all muscle bound. And we were like, you can do it, you can do it. Just just reach up, there's a, there's a, behind your right foot, there's a green rock, a green rock. Can you see a green rock? And he looked back and he goes, I see a sage one. Okay, please tell me that there was a lot of gay drama that ensued and a gay teen had to come in and like talk him off the ledge. Maybe somebody read a little old school Marianne Williamson. Really, depending <laughs> on the age, of this particular game, <laughs> but no, I, um, yeah, I mean, we could talk gay cruise stories all day. I swear to God, that is, you know, I, I mean, I, I always, I invite all my straight friends. I'm like, in, in, in the, as I call it, old world, I'd be like, you are missing out on life if you do not go on one gay cruise. And I don't care if it's a three-day one, you know, it's, it's, it's a, uh, we've seen it all, baby. Seen we've it seen all. it all. What are you doing first thing when they, when they raise the, when the, when the green light, it's green light go. What do you oh, want to do first? You mean in, when I leave my house for the first time in seven yes. years for the vaccine? Yeah. Okay, first of all, I just want you to know, I'm one of those that I have no desire to be part of this first wave. I am so sorry. Me neither. But, yeah. I, right? Okay, good. So I, I read that, you know, uh, all these governors, they can only have 
so much control over what opens and stuff. So I gotta say, um, I'm sure you saw Trump do the thing where churches are opening 1,200 churches in the state of California. We're supposed to be leading the way. And now I'm embarrassed because they keep showing protests from Huntington Beach. And we're used to be calling libtards and snowflakes. I know, and the people in the churches are all getting sick. Like the, oh, the, the are. ministers are getting sick and dying. I mean, it's just... One lady said that she felt safe because Jesus' blood is on her. What is that? I mean, is that, did she, is she wet? Like, is it, <laughs> is it part of like the host? I, I, it, is I that know. like, is that like a warm blankie? Is that like Jesus' I think blood? It, I think is she like... it's a cape. Because I saw, I saw they were doing, they did a poll on CNN and they said overwhelmingly, the people that want to go back to church, they're well aware of the virus and they absolutely think that Jesus will protect them. Here's the thing. I can't understand how they can see the numbers, see the news, hear from the nurses and still make that decision. I mean, this is the reason that we're doing this today is that they're, it's, it's their like wartime. Like after this, all yeah. those nurses are going to have PTSD. Of like course. it's already, they're yeah, all the getting way, free the mental health in New York City. Yeah. Yeah, and by the way, my mom worked in, in hospitals for her whole life. She worked in the administrative office in a hospital at Old Park Rush. And, um, you, know, uh, you know, people forgot hospitals are also custodians. They're also people that do scheduling. And, you know, I agree. And, um, you know, I, I, I uh, did an interview in the Los Angeles Times about this. But, you know, I had a little COVID scare where um, I went you to were see in the hospital. Family. Yeah, they put me in the hospital. And um, they couldn't test me because I, they're, at the time, the CDC only had three guidelines and I didn't meet them. Now I do. But anyway, um, I got a little bird's eye into that world. And I, I thought um, I should tell people like what this is like, because at that time it was March 23rd. And even then, I'd say about a third of the people weren't wearing like gloves or masks. And then, uh, but on the other hand, the, the level of seriousness, like the team that came into my little COVID room, it was really intense. Like you could see them looking at like kind of my stats and finally three of them separately said, we're so sorry, we can't give you this test because the CDC has only three guidelines and you've got to basically have your lungs filled up to here and uh, a cough that reflects that and a fever. So, um, you know, they just were straight up and told me and I said, I understand. And they said, we, we can't like- What's can't. running through your mind? What's, well, are that, you like scared? Are you like alarmed? Are you- freaked out I, I i i gotta be honest i'm kind of like wow are we are we back in this place you know like when they talk about the bad old days before you know uh affordable care act and yeah I, you know and as a small business owner you know I, i'm still paying my employees full time and insurance and i'm happy to do that and always will but um yeah i i do get concerned about that because i don't want to think that you shouldn't go to the hospital unless you think you're like basically about to code so i just thought right. it was interesting to let people know, you know, um, I, I'm just glad they relaxed the guidelines. I've never in my life even heard of a situation where, whether it was an, a, you know, an epidemic or uh, any, any kind of illness that was going around where the government was saying, don't go to anyone, including your local doctor, unless you basically can't eat, can barely breathe. Like they uh -huh. spent really two months saying, we're going to turn you away unless you're pretty much at death's door. And then, like yeah. you said, you see these nurses saying, you know, the PTSD and they're saying everyone who came in was pretty much dead. Like, yeah. and they were saying, oh my God. So I will say, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really frightened for the folks that are going to go out this weekend. I, 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 I feel helpless. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and on that note. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Garrity. and there's there might be might be a couple gay references in there that some of your fans might like but i'm it's so, so happy good to see you alec i just love you i love you too and i'll see you after this is over i want to see your fancy new house i'm you the do. only person and, and i'm gonna leave you with this Hi, the, puppy. Two, the two puppies just got um spayed and so the cone of shame oh cone of shame all right sweetheart i love you and thank you for having me love you kathy bye bye Wow, that's the most time I've spent with Kathy in a really long time. I hated that um, the last part of um, my interview with uh, Jake Shears went all haywire. That I, I went into a shame spiral because of that. Like I might need a glass of white wine. Um, so I'm wrapping this up. Uh, I want to thank all my guests who came here today. And I'm sorry, I'm still getting used to my programming. 
Um, I'm still getting used to the tech thing. I, I promise I'll get better at it. Um, um, if you enjoyed the show, click on the link in my bio and donate whatever you can. Last week, we collected enough to feed 200 nurses. Let's up it to 500 nurses. Let's feed 1,000 nurses this weekend. Um, I don't know who you are, but I love Kathy. Well, thank you for, um, thank you for that, I guess. Uh, <laughs> lots of people don't know who I am. It's okay. Um, click on the link in the bio. I want to thank my guests, Mike Ruiz, Molly Shannon, Jake Shears. I wish I could have a do-over with that. Jake, I'm so sorry. And um, the fabulous Kathy Griffin. Thank you all for tuning in. I do this every Friday at 1 p.m. California time, uh, 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. My next week's guests are Loretta Devine, Yvette Nicole Brown, and Cheryl Lee Ralph. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye.